All right, it's time to do a three-way camera shootout. So uh, what this is going to entail is I am comparing a uh, Canon Digital Rebel SL1 to, uh, which is a newer Canon uh, DSLR, to a Canon Digital Rebel T3i, which I picked up used for $300, to uh, the Canon HFM 500 uh, camcorder. Now, in addition to that, I'm also testing a few lenses. So, uh, both of the DSLRs, I will primarily be testing three lenses. Um, this uh, eight millimeter Rakanon uh, fisheye lens that you see here, I will also be testing, which I have here in this bag, uh, Canon's very own 10 to 18 millimeter STM zoom lens fantastic lens for video it's super quiet the only downside is it's f4.5 to f5.6 so f5.6 is really your most usable uh, um, aperture and also Canon's 24 millimeter STM prime this is a very sharp lens for the money really good if you're doing selfie type stuff not so great but it gives a nice 38 millimeter uh, equivalent field of view uh, if you're if you want to shoot something a, a little bit wider and it's really really good it goes down to f2.8 so you can also use it in low light if you so desire so anyway uh, the HFM 500 does have a wide angle uh, lens adapter on it it's a 0.43 multiplier so you do get a little bit wider field of view all of the cameras, uh, well not all the cameras, the two DSLRs I'm shooting with ProLost flat in, and it basically it's the neutral picture style. Turn the contrast and the sharpness all the way down and saturation down two clicks. And it's uh, all going to be color graded in post um, in Premiere Pro with uh, Lumetri. Uh, all three cameras starting off have been set to daylight white balance. All my lights are daylight balanced. And then uh, basically do a, a basic grade on all three of them. So uh, other than that, everything else is pretty much the same. Um, in terms of settings, I do call out the settings that I'm using for each clip. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what goes, how it goes from there. All right, this is the T3i with the Rockinon 8mm prime lens. Uh, we are shooting at uh, f-stop uh, T3.8 ISO 400 and 1 50th of a second. This is a judge for what it looks like uh, for sharpness, chromatic aberration, etc. Okay, this is the T3i with uh, Canon's EFS 10 to 18 millimeter IS STM lens. Uh, we are shooting at uh, ISO 400, 1 30th of a second, and F4.5. Okay, we are shooting with Canon's 24 millimeter. Uh, STM lens. It's a prime lens. Uh, it goes f2.8 to f22. We are at uh, 1 30th of a second, f4.5, ISO 400. All right, this is the Canon EOS Digital Rebel SL1, otherwise known as the 100D in other parts of the world, uh, if you're not here in the U.S., uh, we are shooting with the Rockinon 8mm T uh, 3.8 uh, prime lens and uh, we're at the same settings as the T3i Pro Lost flat uh, picture profile ISO 400 uh, 150th of a second and the lens is wide open at T 3.8 so this is what it looks like this is the EOS Digital Rebel SL1, otherwise known as the 100D in other parts of the world. Uh, we are shooting with uh, Canon's 10 to 18 millimeter zoom lens, IS uh, STM, it's f4.5 to f5.6. And uh, we are shooting at uh, ISO 400, 
one uh, thirtieth of a second and f 4.5 um, also again along with all the other clips uh, for the DSLRs the Pro Lost flat picture profile and this is what it looks like all right we are now shooting with Canon's uh, Digital Rebel SL1 otherwise known as the 100D with their 24 millimeter pancake prime lens it's a great field of view if you want to shoot something a little bit wider uh, unfortunately you have to uh, get the camera if you're shooting selfie style you have to get the camera much further away from you than what you can manage just at arm's length so that is a bit of a concern but for most other shooting situations this is a very good lens uh, for this camera and it's very very sharp so that's what it looks like again pro lost uh, flat picture profile um, 140th or 130th of a second f45 in ISO 400 all right this is the Canon HF M500 uh, camcorder it's a consumer class camcorder but it has uh, a kind of an unusual feature in that the sensor in it is the one third inch HD CMOS Pro sensor that Canon makes which means the sensor is a third inch sensor not particularly big but not small by a consumer cam it's actually really big uh, compared to a lot of other consumer camcorder sensor sizes a third inch sensor is like a professional uh, ENG type uh, sensor size anyway in addition to that it, it's the native 1080 sensor um, with a wide angle adapter so I can get somewhat of a wide angle uh, we're shooting one one hundred one one hundredth of a second 6 dB of gain and the lens is a quarter stop down from wide open uh, and wide open for this lens is f 1.8 so it's a pretty fast lens and um, you know everything else is is basically the same this is just to uh, test for dynamic range uh, we've got uh, daylight settings same as the other two cameras and um, you know this is basically how I would set the shot up for shooting here in this scenario so we'll see what it looks like uh, once we get it pulled in. There's not a lot of other changes I can make to this. So this is what it is. Wrapping up in conclusion, you know, I, for uh, YouTube on Canon DSLRs, I have to say if you're going to be shooting selfie style, the 10 to 18 millimeter uh, IS STM lens is extremely good the um, eight millimeter Rockinon lens is really has ha, does have some good things about it if you want a really deep depth of field you can uh, set your focus point to a uh, 0.7 meters and uh, then from that point forward you have full manual iris control um, of your iris uh, so if you're outdoors, you just do one one twenty fifth of a second shutter speed, 0.7 uh, meters focal point, and then from there you just control your exposure with your iris. You've got T uh, 3.8, which is basically f 3.6 all the way out to T 22 uh, for your f stops. Um, on a T 3i, it is okay picture quality, but quite frankly. Um, it's a little soft especially when you look at the 10 to 18 millimeter lens at 10 millimeters you know the field of view is a little bit more uh, pushed in but in terms of picture sharpness the 10 to 18 millimeter is a significantly sharper lens than this this is a fun lens to have and the the primary reason why I, bu I bought it is because I wanted to get an equivalent 24 millimeter field of view if I cr did the 3x crop in on the camera which the T3i the 70d and the new T T6i T6s uh, allows you to do 
but um, that's just an experimental thing. You know, not not digitally cropped in where you're just shooting wide open. It's ridiculously, it is ridiculously wide field of view. Um, so it has its uses and it's a lot of fun, but in, in, for all purposes, I would probably, if I was shooting selfie style, uh, not to mention this is a very heavy lens, if I was shooting selfie style, I would probably uh, go with a T3i with the 10 to 18 lens. You can pick up a used T3i body for like 300 bucks or less at this point. Uh, the 10 to 18 uh, STM uh, IS zoom lens, you, again, you can pick up for $300, I think it is, new. You can probably get one used less than that. Um, really good picture quality on the T3i. If you want to step it up, get the T6s with the 10 to 18. Uh, the SL1 is really small and light, and I really love it. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it has no flip out screen so I can't actually see what I'm shooting it's that's simple enough the frame and if I'm outdoors I could just say you know what I'm gonna go into full manual mode 125th ISO 100 and f16 and you know just follow the sunny 16 rule if I'm outdoors during the daytime and before I you know start shooting myself actually look to see where the exposure is but in all honesty you know, uh, it, it's the king for light and sharp, and it has more dynamic range than the T3i, and it just generally looks better than the T3i with the 10 to 18 uh, millimeter lens. But, uh, you know, having that flip out screen, that there's a lot to be said for that because you know where you are exposure wise. Um, if I wanted to be really professional about this, I'd either get a 70D or a T6S. Uh, the T6S is newer, it does have a little more resolution, um, it does probably have better dynamic range than the 70D simply because it's newer, it's got a newer DIVIC chip. But uh, the king for all lightness is this little HFM 500. I'm holding this by hand, it's not that big of a deal, it's pretty good picture quality. Um, in terms of resolution, it's uh, easily on par with what you get with the DSLR, and also just in terms of dynamic range, it's easily on par with what you get with a DSLR. So, you know, a lot of that is I'm a lot less concerned about that, and I'm more concerned about usability. The little flip out screen, again, really great. The, the downside, the utter and complete downside to shooting with the HFM 500. The advantage is it's really small, it's really light, it makes a really manageable 24 megabits per second AVC HD video stream. Super simple, super easy, the sound is relatively good, you can basically just about shoot the thing in auto and not go wrong. It's effectively a super high quality webcam. The downside is uh, I, I just don't have enough control over my exposure i just don't you know in picture styles you don't have picture styles which is fine set it to daylight balance use daylight balance lights it's okay it's very easy to white balance and color correct in post it's very gradable um it just it bothers me you know getting correct exposure just it really bothers me um you know i basically shoot tv or time value, uh, which is basically shutter priority mode, and I set it to 1 60th or 1 100th of a second, and then from there, manual uh, gain, auto gain, and dial it down to 0 dB auto gain if I'm shooting during the daytime, and then, you know, basically it's all iris control at that point, and the camera tends to overexpose, so I'm constantly having to go in and get the manual control and try to, you know, basically stop the aperture down it's not that great it, it just i really wish it had better control gave me better control over exposure that is one thing that the dslrs have over any consumer grade camcorder is way better control stick that bad boy in manual you have 100 percent control over everything so at any rate that's uh, the conclusion if it were me i would go with a t3i with the uh, 10 to 18 millimeter lens um, 
if I really wanted something really light or if I wasn't shooting selfie style YouTube videos and I was actually shooting other YouTube videos and I needed a really small light run and gun type rig, I would easily go with a Canon SL1, a 10 to 18 lens and uh, the 18 to 135 STM lens that uh, Canon makes. That thing is ridiculously sharp for video, ridiculously quiet. Get it in a little shoulder mount rig or what have you where you can be looking at it um, with a battery adapter. Really small, really light, really awesome. So anyway, that's that. And uh, that's the that concludes the three-way shootout.